Hey folks, Eric Rodoy here, Director of Historic Preservation at Historic Deerfield. And I'm at the Creelman house today. Um, we picked this house up about a year and a half or so ago, and we got big plans for it. Uh, but in the meantime, before we start work, it presents a great opportunity to uh, take a look at it, and go through it, and learn a little bit about it. Um, the house itself, the front portion, probably a back L, was built about uh, 1730 for Timothy Childs. And then it went through a whole series of alterations and improvements through time. Uh, probably the two most significant changes to the building were uh, very early in its life. It's, it, it started out as a center chimney house. And as you can see, that center chimney is gone. Um, so early on, that, that chimney mass was, was taken down and a, a pair of new chimneys were built uh, to either side of a, of a new center passage that most likely accommodated a, a, a center stair. So it brought it up, made it a more fashionable house. Um, the, the second big change to the house occurred in the 1880s, around 1886 or so, when uh, James Wells Champney and his wife lived in it. And um, what, what that was, was the house was originally up closer to the street, like most of the early houses here are and um, at that time in the 1880s the whole thing was picked up and moved back um, and that was done as a, as a result of uh, the loss of a massive elm that that it was originally um, next to and uh, what they did was they picked it up and moved it back to a, another elm tree that was on the property and unfortunately we we just lost that um, what I want to do though is take you up into the attic, show you a space most people don't get to see. So why don't we go inside and take a look at that. All right, so we're gonna head up to the attic now. We're gonna take a look at the, uh, the roof frame and how it was constructed. And what we're gonna be looking at specifically is a, a principal rafter, principal purlin system. And, and that was a method of construction uh, used here in Deerfield and the Connecticut River Valley for the probably the better part of the 18th century. So, um, so we'll go take a look at that, point out the, the major timbers and how they were um, put together and fabricated. Uh, then we're going to take a look at uh, the changes that have gone on up there through time and uh, see what they tell us. And then finally we'll just take a real close look at some of the materials and get a sense of what to look at uh, when we're trying to understand um, uh, markings, uh, tool marks, uh, thing, things of that nature. So let's go take a look. All right, let's check things out. And you're gonna hear me dragging my drop light around here. That's the only way we're gonna be able to see things. So let's take a big picture look first. Okay. So, we've got our principal rafter right here, this big guy. And that falls on top of a post in the wall. Each of them do. So we got rafter at the end, and then one here on a post. You notice in between this big guy, that's our principal purlin. And set on top of those on the flat are much smaller rafters. Those are our common rafters here. See that? And then on top of that, we've got our horizontal sheathing. It's running all over that and then you can see some wood shingles still underneath, or on top, I should say. And that's just repeated through each bay, right down through the building. That's what forms our principal rafter, principal purlin system. All right, let's take a closer look at some of these members. So here's our principal rafter right here, this guy. Right. This guy, he varies between about eight and a half, around nine inches, six inches wide there, single timber. And up where it 
joins the, the uh, corresponding principal rafter. You see there, it's joined, looks like it's a bridle joint there, pinned. This one is kind of interesting. Doesn't run through, but the corresponding one does. And then these, these purlins here, which are also running about five and a half, six, six inches by about nine or so. If you notice, they're tended into this principal rafter and, and they're offset at each bay. So they tend in through here. But each one is offset to allow the, the tenons to run through. You can see there that they're pinned also right here, there and there. Now, what's pretty cool are these little guys, these common rafters here, because you see they're laid on the flat and they're only about three by four inches or so. And they run up. It's kind of interesting how they joined them. If you look here, they're lapped and then pinned. All right, I couldn't, because they're on the flat, couldn't easily do a Morrison tenon. So it's pretty neat. And if you look, these guys, they're spaced 36 inches on center pretty wide, you know, but like I said, it was only holding the wood shingle roof. Sure, there's a snow load on it, but it's done, done its job. What's really cool is this guy here. It's got a wind brace, runs in. Imagine there was a corresponding one, but uh, I'll show you what goes on down there in a second. All right, let's take a look at some of the, uh, the tool marks that are left here and see what they tell us about it. So if you're not familiar with it, what we're looking at here, those are the marks from uh, broad axe. This is a hewn, hewn timber here. All right, and if you just looked at it face on, it might look like this. But when, when we throw some raking light on it, it really brings out the markings, you know? So timber this size, and the log it came out of, the tree it came out of, would have been a pretty big piece of wood, right? So at this point in time, it's easier to hew it out, maybe in place, rough it out, get it out to a site, and then finish it off. These smaller guys here, these little three by four common rafters, if we take a look at them, You'll notice the telltale signs of a reciprocating saw. See that? So these guys, these are all sawn right there. Pretty good marks. Same goes, th same holds true for the sheathing boards too. See, much smaller material. All sawn out at this point in time. And again, if we look at principal principal rafters here, you can see they're all hewn out too. So a major alteration that took place early in the history of this house was uh, the removal of its center chimney mass. This guy started life out as a, a center chimney, probably a hall and parlor plan. As you can see, sort of in the patching in of the floorboards here, this is the location where that massive center chimney rose up through the building, right? So this here's the chimney bay framed by uh, that principal rafter there and this guy right over here. And if you look up at the common rafters, see those two? Those are the original common rafters. And 
they would have butted up against the chimney mass. So this whole area here has been patched in, scabbed in with short pieces, like you see there, some there, and then the floor infill too. What happened was most likely they wanted a center passage plan. So that chimney disappeared and then new chimneys were constructed over here in the back back wall of the house. Here's one and there'd be a corresponding one on the other side here, but we've got the, the stair up here blocking our view. Um, this here, this is the attic to the back L. Not as interesting as our old timer here, but if we, what it allows us to do is come out and look at the roof, she, roof sheathing of the original attic. And right up there, right there, that's where that center chimney would have popped up through the roof. And it's just been patched in now. You can see that hard edge there. Got some shingle nails left. Even look at that old piece of old shingle. So when that center chimney disappeared, a pair of chimneys were added on the end wall of the house. Uh, one for each room to either side of the center passage. So he, here we have the north one and south one's hidden away down there. But you can see the location of that chimney mass comes straight up through and it lands right where that purlin, principal purlin, is located. And uh, that didn't much stop them because if we take a look here, they just hogged that guy out, ran this chimney up right on past. See right there, you know, and it's held up okay through the years, you know. Someone decided to be on the safe side and add in some of this bracing and stuff, but be honest, isn't doing too much. But uh, that's what happens when you want to improve your house, right? So this is the door up into the attic here, and it's uh, clearly reused material. It's early, most likely original the house. And it's just, it's really just a beautiful example of a 18th century, sort of a simple feather edge board and batten door here. You know, got these two panels, they're just joined together right there with that feather edge. Simple battens holding it together, three of them. You can see. Beveled. Got rose head nails here holding them in. It's likely clenched through on the opposite side. And then what's really beautiful are these H hinges here. Look at these guys. A little nicer than your simple H hinge. Got that foliate detail up top here. Some file work. You know, even just these little file treatments right there and there. Got a pair of those. Latch is a Suffolk latch. It's got this triangular treatment on it. Just look at the way that thumber terminates. It's really beautiful guy. Too nice to be up here. Yeah. But what's really cool about this attic it's this guy right here. At some point in time, the 19th century, no doubt, uh, this room was added. And it's really cool. But I'm going to hold off from showing you guys it right now. All right, you're going to have to tune back in at some point and uh, we'll go through this guy. We'll take a look at its construction. You know, there's a lot of really interesting reused material here. Um, a lot of good early 19th century material as well. 
So, that's the Creelman Attic, principal rafter, principal purlin system. I hope you guys dug this. I did. It's one of my favorite attics here. We'll take a look at some others. Okay. Thanks for watching. You folks be good. Tell your friends about this, and uh, I'll catch up with you later. Take care.